360 is back. Our next story is uh, in collaboration with uh, ESPN the magazine, and Sean Asell is here. Tell us what you got. And this may not sound like a sports story, but just bear with me. It's got international intrigue. It's got the largest manhunt ever held in Britain. It's got a Moroccan safe house. It's got spy gear that James Bond would love. It's got a seven-year-old hostage. It's got the largest cash robbery in history. If you take the Brinks heist, the great trade robbery, all the biggest crimes, and throw them together, I'm not sure they're as big as this is to Britain. security depot manager was kidnapped. It's ironic that his nickname's Lightning for, because for promoters, this man is lightning in a bottle. And this crime was at his heart a crime of violence. Well-rounded Lightning Lee Perry shows he's got well skills to go with those nasty hands. They stole more than anyone has ever done before. This is a bad spot. And he beats it. And it's all over. It is all over. I've been an underdog for as long as I can know, but I like being an underdog because my last two fights I've won by knockout. He was Britain's hottest mixed martial arts fighter. It was the greatest cash heist in history. British police have launched a massive search for the men behind one of... An armed gang made off with perhaps as much as $90 million. $90 million, all of it in cash. Now at age 30... Lightning Lee Murray is suspected of being the brains behind one of the world's most brazen crimes. February 21st, 2006, 7 p.m. A quiet road 45 miles southeast of London. The manager of a Securitas cash warehouse is pulled over while driving home from work. He took it to be an unmarked police car. Two men in it in police uniform, uh, yellow reflective jackets and, and caps. They told him that he'd been speeding. They asked him to come and sit in their vehicle in the back. He had been threatened uh, with a, an automatic pistol and told that he'd be shot if he didn't uh, comply with the instructions he was given. His feet were tied together, hands already uh, cuffed, and he's then had tape uh, placed across his eyes. 8.40 p.m. 25 miles away, the manager's wife and son are at home. There's a knock at the door. The police, or bogus police, again appeared there. They informed her that her husband had been involved in a road accident, uh, seriously injured, she was then taken to the police car. At that point, I think she realized and let out a scream. Um, but it was too late. I think one of them pointed a gun at her uh, and told her that she, she should do what they say. The wife and son are taken to a remote farm. There they see the husband and father bound and blindfolded. He was told once again that he was to cooperate with the robbers and he was to remember at all times that his wife and his son would come to harm if he didn't cooperate. Several terrifying hours later, the manager is taken to the Securitas cash warehouse he runs on the outskirts of London. He's forced to help the robbers get inside the high security facility without sounding alarms. 1.21 a.m. Closed circuit TV shows the manager entering the warehouse grounds. He is trailed by a robber dressed as a police officer, wearing a fake mustache and beard to disguise his face. 60 seconds later, the manager and one robber are inside. After the night watchman is subdued, the airlock on the large steel door clicks open. Six thieves pour in. And at that point, the security officer was taken hostage, preventing him from speaking to anybody else. When the robbers arrived, they were a pretty sinister bunch. They were all disguised in blue boiler suits. Some had uh, ski masks to cover their faces. Some of them wearing body armor. The terrifying thing for the night staff who were on duty there was the fact that these guys were so heavily armed. 1.34 a.m. All seven robbers swarm the vault. 
taking the overnight staff hostage at gunpoint. The robbers were basically just shouting at them to keep down and to, and, and to um, effectively do what they were told. The gunmen back their seven and a half ton truck up to the large loading bay. They use a forklift and rolling steel cages to move heaping piles of cash. 2.34 a.m. Seven and a half hours after the ordeal begins, the heavily armed gunmen make off with 53 million British pound notes, the equivalent of 92 million U.S. dollars. It was the largest cash haul of all time. The truck was literally stuffed with cash. If they brought a larger truck, they would have got away with something in the region of 300 million U.S. dollars. But 92 million dollars is more than I suspect any of them dreamt that they'd get away with. It's a real king's ransom. England awakes the next morning to news of the heist and that all the hostages were freed unharmed. Security depot manager was kidnapped and his family threatened at gunpoint. This is organized crime at its top level. This is planned and executed with military precision. But within hours, the meticulous plan dreamed up, investigators later say, by cage fighter Lee Murray, begins to collapse. In the last few minutes, Kent police have revealed they have recovered a quantity of cash from a van found in a hotel car park. Within days, the vehicles used in the heist and empty cash cages, along with nearly $20 million, are recovered. The case breaks wide open after a makeup artist is arrested. Police find false mustaches and prosthetics used by the robbers in the heist. The discovery of DNA leads to three arrests as police begin to zero in on the alleged mastermind. There was some makeup found, uh, some, a, a tin of some kind of makeup, I'm not sure what it was, had uh, Lee written on it, Lee M. These are the Barnfield projects of London South End. Lee Murray was raised here by a Moroccan father and a British mother. Mark Epstein was a leader of the gang that Murray joined as a young street hood. Later, Murray became one of the gang's leaders. Lee was one of the one of the, the younger lot, you know, the youngers we call them. He was a feared guy, you know, he's not someone you take lightly at all. I mean, it, there was plenty of gunplay and, you know, drugs and stuff. You know, he, he, I mean, he was his own guy, but, you know, it's like that. That's when you, when you start getting to, you know, start getting to a certain level, it's, uh, it's a dangerous game you play.